Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be working again on my prompt ribbon embroidery connected to Susanna and her channel, Vintage Blend Studios. And she's uh, given us a, a monthly prompt, which is an old sewing technique that we're revisiting. So I'm doing ribbon embroidery for the month of July. So in episode one, we created our base and I trimmed back my little element here. So I'm just sitting here looking at this piece and thinking, how will I proceed? I have a second little piece and I have some ribbons and then Fudge arrived. Yes, so he's turned up on the scene. Now Fudgy and I, we've been busy this morning. It's drizzly rain and our dear Casper has gone down the drain again, this stupid cat. So Fudge and I have been out in the drizzle. Fudgy's fur's a little bit damp and um, sitting on the side of the footpath trying to coax Casper to jump back up out of the drain and he's bellowing and bellowing because there's water trickling past him. Don't bump the camera, Fudge. Just letting Fudge settle back down on this little mat and then I'll slide him into shot. He, um, yeah, Casper, I, I don't know what's wrong with that cat. The, um, there's Fudgy. The, you can see his fur's <laughs> damp. No, he's leaving now. He's, that's it, had enough. So he's really restless. All night he was bellowing and carrying on and then I brought him into our room and that didn't settle him. And I'm like, I know Casper's down the drain, Fudge. There's nothing I can do. He's an idiot. What can we do? And Fudgy was like, Casper's down the drain. Casper's down the drain. So this morning, as soon as it was sunrise, well, the sun didn't even get up. The rain has kicked in. So Casper's going to get himself into quite a predicament if he doesn't get out. And I know he can get out. There's about four exits. And when he heard my voice, oh boy, did he, he was like, got frantic to, you know, get to me. But he still didn't make the effort to jump up and help himself. So, yeah, that's what we've been doing this morning. Trying to convince Casper to come out of the drain. So, yes, yeah, a little bit frustrated. I wasn't even sure if I was going to make a video. It sort of has knocked me around a bit this morning, just feeling a little, you know, focused on a cat down a drain. And then the other thing that's happened, it's, it's just going to be a great day today, I can feel it, is Bandit has developed kennel cough. We had a, a visitor on the weekend, a puppy over to play, and that puppy has obviously um, been somewhere to get kennel cough, which is making my bandit cough. Puppy's okay now. I got a message probably about three days after puppy left saying that um, Scout has developed kennel cough. I'm so sorry. He went and had a um, cappuccino or puppuccino at a cafe and met some random strange doggies. They all sniffed noses. Didn't think much more of it. Three or four days later, he was at our place for a play date. He then went home. A couple of days later, he's developed kennel cough. So his mum and dad are very, very sorry. And it's not their fault at all. It's These things happen. And um, said, oh, Scout's got kennel cough. So he's doing that hacky cough. Um, I hope Pepper and Bandit didn't get it because after they left here, they went and had another uh, cafe encounter with some other random dogs. So we just weren't sure if it was pre-coming here he got it or he got it after he left here. And for days, nothing happened with my two. Everything seemed pretty good. And I thought, oh, we've dodged a bullet. But yesterday evening when I fed Bandit, he made this funny sound and I thought, oh, oh, so then all through the night, cough, cough, cough. It's a bronchial infection. They do get over it. If they're healthy dogs, they'll just get over it. They have it for probably two days, three days, sometimes a week. They get a little bit lethargic, but um, you can head to your vet and get a shot of antibiotics and that sort of knocks it straight away, which Scout did. And um, 
as soon as business hours start, I'll contact our vet and I'll get Bandit a shot of antibiotics. And I'll probably take Pepper in too because it's highly contagious because they just have the particles in their breath and then they play and, you know, Scout and Bandit and Pepper played hard. So I'm not surprised that some greebly was passed between them. So between Bandit coughing through the night, Fudge in the garage bellowing all night, letting me know that Casper wasn't home. Oh boy, I feel really weary. I feel like I haven't, haven't rested. So I've sat down to do this and I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> but I was nearly going to, you know, skip this filming today. And I thought, I'll just go and sit on the couch, have a coffee, watch a video. So I did that and I started to wake up a bit and feel a little bit sharper and thought, no, nah, I'm good. Let's get in and do it. I need a distraction and I'm hoping while we're film, Casper saunters into the room and says, I'm home, mum. What's for breakfast? He's got three or four exit points. Oh, I don't know. That cat... The, um, the driveway gate is an automatic gate and it's always closed. But for some reason, it's mucking around a little bit. So when we got home yesterday, I thought the gate was shut. I'm sure I heard it sliding. So then I closed the garage door and we settled in for the evening. But the gate didn't close properly. So Casper's had his dinner and then gone gallivanting. So when it come to later in the evening, it was time to shut the house down and lock him in for the night. He was nowhere to be found. So we thought straight away, he's down the drain. My husband went out, unbeknownst to me, I was already in bed. So at one o'clock in the morning, my husband's out down the street calling him, but he didn't say a word. He, he, did not say boo. So he's sitting down in the drain listening to my husband. Oh, he's a, he's a sod. I don't know why he does this. So this morning when Fudge and I walked down the street, obviously Fudgy knew where he was. He heard my voice and was just like screaming, you know, get me out, get me out, get me out. But... He wouldn't jump up to the next ledge, which makes it quite easy just to walk out. And of course, it's raining and drizzling and there's a gentle little stream of water rolling through. If he doesn't get his tush out of there, he's going to be in big trouble. Cats. What can I say? Adventurous cats. He never used to do this. We've had him for, what, 15 years? And the cat has been the, the quiet stay-at-home cat. But in the last probably six months, remember when I went to Paris and Casper went down the drain and spent the whole week down the drain driving my husband nuts as he lowered ladders in to try and get him and he wouldn't come to him. He fed him down there. And then randomly after having his, Gaz got his mate over to help him <laughs> nearly every night, out walks Casper, comes up the street, stands at the little gate to come back into the property, meowing if to say, can you please open the gate? Can you hear that cough? Hear that? That's, ba that's Bandit. Poor fellow. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, so I've got another hour and then I can get him into the vet and get him a shot of antibiotics. <clears throat> so poor, poor bandit. So today is just going to be a lovely day. Oh, poor bandit. I gave him a little bit of honey just to soothe his throat a little bit. I was reading on the internet, you know, doctor, internet, vet, just natural remedies to ease it. A lot of the sites say you don't even need antibiotics. They just get over it, but... I don't know. I don't want anything to happen to him. I'll have a chat to the vet in the morning. Oh, well, when they open. And see what she wants to do. 
they usually go really lethargic and it really, you know, knocks them around. But he hasn't. He's still goosing around like a, a playful, the playful dog that he is. I tell you who is quiet, which is very odd, is Pepper. So I'm going to call it that Pepper has also got this kennel cough coming. Oh. I call it kennel cough because when everything, everyone's close together playing and hanging out in a kennel, even a dog park, it's um, very easy to trans, what's the word, transmit it? No, what's the word, transmissible, trans, pass it on to each other. So yes, never had it before, but my dogs usually don't go to dog parks. I'm not a fan of dog parks. No, no, no shade to anyone who goes regularly to a doggy park. Sometimes you sort of have to because you don't have a backyard. So <clears throat> it becomes part of your routine and they do so love it. But I'm not a fan. I haven't had to because I've got plenty of space for them to play. But it's just one of those things. You hang out with other dogs. Who knows what noses are rubbed it's just part of it all so hopefully we get on top of our kennel cough hopefully i get my cat back out of the drain before dinner or before some rain comes to really wet his tail he's got a trickle of water going past him he's, he looks dry he looked at me on the one side of the road and then he went back into the tunnel that goes underneath the bitumen. And then I walked to the opposite side of the road where the second entry point is. And he walked across there and looked up at me, meowed, like, get me out of here, get me out of here. And I'm thinking, well, you can get yourself out, son. You just got to think about these things. There's my phone buzzing. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to stitch all this down and I'll be back and we'll carry on with um, our stitching. Won't be a moment. Hi guys, I'm back. So only about 15 minutes has gone by since um, I left you. I haven't quite finished stitching around this flower. Fudgy's been coming and going from my desk just visiting. It's like he's saying, come on mum, Casper's not around. And he's sort of sitting beside me here. Then he leaves, goes out to the garage, comes back, meows. It's quite, quite interesting. He's definitely aware that Casper's, you know, not home. Bandit's now laying beside the window here, looking at me, feeling miserable. Pepper's sitting over the top of him, looking at him, looking at me. I tell you, the house is just not right today. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll get to the end of the day and solve all these issues. But at the moment, nothing can be solved until the cat decides to climb out of the drain, which he can easily do. He's just, I don't know what he's thinking. And it's about quarter past eight, 20 past eight now in the morning. So as soon as the vet surgery opens at nine, I can give him a call and make an appointment to get down there. And the rest of my day, we need to go and get our windscreen replaced because our little trip to um, Barham up and back, we copped a rock in the windscreen. So now I need a new windscreen. So that's on the agenda as well today. So it's just one of those days. So, I've had a bit of an idea on this too. I've got this picture that's been sitting on my desk for a little while. This one here. I bought some fabric and it came with it as a little, you know, cute little thing. It's got a little boy in a little cart. And it somehow came back out onto my desk here in the main part. And I was looking at it while I was chatting on the phone to my dad a few minutes ago and I thought, ooh, um, that matches. 
So I'm just coming around the bottom of this little motif here. And it's the last little bit to secure and I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing. I'm thinking about working it into the piece. Don't mind putting a bit of paper into my stitcheries. Sort of just adds another layer of interest. There's a lot of textile artists out there that do that. They'll incorporate different mediums into their work. I always think paper is quite an interesting thing to play with. So what I've done, I don't know how it'll go, but we'll have a play. I've left this side open here because I'm thinking of sliding that into there. See how I've got this running stitch around the perimeter here. I'm wondering if I can pick up on that and incorporate it into the image. The lines line up really well. Yeah, I think I can. So what I might do is I'm going to put a touch of glue on the back of it. That will, see it was a little note after I bought something from an Etsy store. Just a little bit of glue to hold it. I'm gonna slide it in. I think I'll line up the edge of the image with that stitch line. That'll hold it into position. Just add a nice little element to it. And then I might just add a bit of glue to this. I should be able to still be able to continue that little overcast stitch around the edge of that element but that'll just be that little bit extra just let that sit for a moment hey i like that little bunny and the little boy mm. i like how you can collage different things together now what i might do is i'll just finish stitching this little bit up here. So I'd say this will be a three part series unless I can nut out some floral bits. But I think by the time I get this all stitched, to be honest, I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> oh, goodness me, now the knot's not big enough. Let's get a new piece of cotton. I think if I just get this stitched and that stitched, it'll be a hang of an effort. And then maybe the next video, I'll feel a little more like doing some ribbon embroidery. Isn't it funny how when you get distracted, you just, I don't know. It's very hard to complete a normal task when there's something on your mind. I'll feel better once I know Bandit's got a shot in the bum of antibiotics. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Pepper with too because it... It is quite a contagious, contagious thing, this um, kennel cough. It's a bronchial, bronchial issue. And she's definitely off, I, I can just tell. Unless she's, you know, mourning the loss of her playmate because they're not out the back gallivanting, playing. Possible. But I'm going to assume that she's going to get it. she hasn't got it already so what's the time now 20 past 8 23 minutes past 8 oh, I just want that vet surgery open and that way I know that the appointment's done and it's all good I've got to do the van first and hopefully that cat turns up otherwise he can sit there for the day have a good think about his behavior <laughs> He'll be hungry, he'll be missing breakfast. So I have a feeling he'll saunter in 
And as I said before, Fudgy, he's coming and going from the room. So I'd say by the time we finish this video, Fudge will have jumped up too. Ah, the trials and tribulations of owning pets. Isn't it just lovely? It's good when it's good and it's not so good when it's really bad. Or it's really bad when it's not so good. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, coming around the top here. So the plan with all those ribbons is just to start building in there more flowers, basically, just scattering through that whole area with these ribbons, creating some more bits and pieces of interest. I was looking forward to doing this piece and it's just taken the shine off of it due to my life adventures okay that's got the little piece secure except for up there so let's let's see if we can get some overcast stitch oh poor bandit Hear that cough. Like I don't have kids, but I can't even imagine what it's like to have a sick child. I just, it's bad enough sick animals, let alone your child. Oh, just as, be horrible. Gee, this is a real melancholy video, isn't it? Well, that's life isn't it it's that's life there's uh, no editing here you're getting everything okay I'm gonna scoot up here and I'm hoping that my needle will just punch through that card and then I'll be nice and secure Going to work a treat. What I might do is make the hole punch in here first, where it's not seen, and where I go down, I can clearly see where I'm going with the needle. So I can control my holes a little bit. There we go, that's better. That's gonna hold that really securely. Punch up through there, back down there. Yeah, that'll work a treat. It's not going to go anywhere anyway. It's all stitched into my piece now. My friend is um, a vet at the RSPCA on the other side of town and she actually owns uh, Bruce, Bandit's brother from the same litter. And uh, I sent her a message a couple days ago and said that the young pup has kennel cough. I said, what's the chances of getting, getting it? And she said, very high because it's uh, pretty contagious. And she said, but don't stress about it because it's um, often, it just wears itself out and you'll, you'll be fine, but if you're concerned and he looking like he's gonna start getting pretty weak, 
go and get a shot of antibiotics just to give your system a bit of a hit. But she said it's more of a problem for doggies that are, are not healthy. So she said if they're frail and then they get kennel cough on top of it, you know, it can be a problem. They can go into pneumonia pretty quick for them. So that reassured me a couple of days ago that if it did happen, we would be okay. But now that it's happened, it's like, oh, I sent her a message um, while I was chatting to my dad a few minutes ago and said, guess what? We've got it. She hasn't replied yet. She won't be surprised by the sound of it. She'll be like, yeah, I thought he might. She says she sees a lot of it. It's pretty common. Oh, I can hear him. Oh, the knot's not big enough. Poor bandit. Okay, so just got a little bit more there to stitch. And I'll be happy that the little photo is not going anywhere. And I'm wondering if that's actually enough to hold it, you know. There's glue in behind. I had planned on stitching along that edge. I'll see how it goes. I probably should. Sort of feel like I should. So that's it secure there. The little flower has held it. So the more you stitch into the paper, the more it looks like it's got holes in that from the stitching. So I just can't decide whether I will or not. If I can get it. Maybe I use a larger stitch so it's not as the other thing I could do is put another piece of fabric. I've got any fabric on my table. None of this sort of suits, I don't think. No, it certainly doesn't suit, but what I could do is stitch a piece of fabric onto it and that's securing it down you know what i mean like just a little hint of something up there that helps pin it down yeah i like that idea where's the container of fabric for this project what did i do with it i put it away because um um I felt like I'd passed the fabric stage and I was into doing the embroidery, so I popped it away. I might just have a little look and see if see if there's a morsel in here that could be a bit of camphor quilt. Now we are matching it to this other page, aren't we? So let's have a quick glance at that. Okay, so I could even use a bit of that. Bit of the Tim Holtz fabric. Don't mind that, just a little touch, but I'd probably have to put another bit somewhere to balance it. There's some Tim Holtz fabric. And 
it's sort of a bit lost, that one. There's a floral. I think that's a Lucello fabric too, you know. Bet it is. Gosh, got fabric everywhere now. Doesn't suit. Doesn't suit it. I tend to think this is actually a nice little touch. Would be like a little a photo corner. I don't even remember the day when we were putting little corners on our photos to hold them into books so that if we wanted to take them out, we could. It was a, a way of See, there's a window in that photo and I can't decide if the window is a lovely feature of the photo or I use that to bring in this. It'd be good if I could find a word that could go up there. sort of tend to like this you know I might just got my needle and thread here oh. just gonna stitch it through the fabric so I'm not penetrating I'm not penetrating the image yet just like a little I'm just playing. If I don't like it, then just take it out. Even a number. Just another little detail, you know. The more little, I guess, details you can put on your work, the more interesting it's going to look. So do we stitch along? Do we frame it out? Sort of like it framed. Don't know why, but we're going to frame it. to attempt to get a reasonably straight line and in the process it'll secure that top edge of our picture maybe I'll go hunting for some words I could stamp something I have those little letter stamps that gives you the opportunity to, to write your own words I don't know who knows where this is going to lead oops So when I finish filming this video, I shall wander back down the street to the drain and have another chat to Casper and see if I can convince him to come home. Otherwise, he's going to have to lay low. At least the rain seems to be going. Well, it's not really rain. It's just drizzling. There's rain coming in the next few days, so he really needs to get his act into gear and get his butt home. Maybe I'll put a button here. Sorry. There's a thought that just randomly went through my head. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's going to be a button, guys. I'll find something to go there. This Just to make a little feature. Okay. Actually, I think there's a button on the bench behind me that's blue. 
whether it's the right color. Who knows, but I'll grab it. Oh, I can see a rose too, a ribbon rose. It's probably heading off in another direction. Okay, let's just tidy up for a second here. Things are getting out of hand. Let's get this back away. Okay, now, there was a button in here. It wasn't blue, it's cream. Oh, I like that. Yep, that's what we're doing. Okay. It'll look like a little button tabs holding that photo into position. I like that. That's very sweet. Let's get rid of that pen before he bites me. Let's turn it right around. What's on the back of the button? Oh, that's a different color. Oh, bandit. Poor fellow. Um, I might, we might tie it. So what you do is you come from the front. So you've got this, this bit hanging out here. Then you go through like you would normally. Then you come back up. That sort of helps you to secure it. Come on, through you come. There we go. And then tie the button. Makes it just that little bit more interesting. Just with a couple little knots. If you're worried that it's in a position where it might come undone, you can always put a little dob of um, glue fabric glue or art glitter glue in the center of that knot just a little bit and that'll seep into the fibers of that cotton or thread and secure it so there you go okay I like that just a nice little element so we need a needle with a nice big eye on it probably a cruel needle that will hold the ribbon and let's see what we can do there's another pin let's get rid of him before he bites me too what ribbon it's quite white maybe the little blue one first i feel like it just needs a little touch of something Okay, where will we put some little blue buds? Really could be anywhere. I don't have a lot of ribbon here. These are little scraps that were in my case. Let's just do some little clusters. And we can then come back with some embroidery cotton and connect them in. At the moment, I just want to get some little buds or little some little itty bitty. So I would connect. Where's my pen? Connect that into there with a little stitch or two, so those two little blue buds look like they're part of this piece. So then the next two, where will we do them? We'll do them up here. And it can start creeping out into the background. So we can drift Drift our colours out. 
So that's all I'm going to do with the ribbon is just work through popping little floral bits here and there. Oh, that's shocking. Look how big that butt is. That's just not going to work. thread and have another go at that we only want a little guy not a big big thing keep it delicate girl keep it delicate that's it and we might sort of feel like I could do something big there so I might scoot across here and do a little spray of these little blue blue flowers up here. One. Two. I'll do a third one. a little tuft there we go now where can we jump to that feels like it could be a big flower in here using some of this white or ribbon so I might do a little tuft heading up this way out a little bit I think if I fill up all my little spots I won't have anywhere to Sort of wriggle around a bit with the bigger ribbon. I also need to be mindful that I only have so much ribbon too, so I might actually end that off just with a little knot. This is very fine ribbon, so it's pretty easy to work with actually. Let's have another go with the blue let's have a bit swooshing down this way up here just a hint like a little spray it's fun when you've got a vintage piece of embroidery and then you go and join the party and add your little interpretation, whether it be some fabrics or laces or more embroidery. Or you find a vintage embroidery that's not completed and they've only done a little bit of it and then you start working on it again, but with the mindset of slow stitch and collaging and texture, it sort of just opens up a whole new yeah, I'm happy with that. Might just end that off because I'm going to try and jump to the very top of this piece and put a splash. This is definitely going to be a three-part series. We're going to run out of time. I think I had done 15 minutes already. Stopped the video to take that call. So we'll get the rest of this blue into position. And then I'll come back with another video where we play some more with these ribbons. That way, hopefully, by the end of today, I've got on top of all my little issues that I have to deal with today. And I will feel a little bit more like stitching. I feel like stitching, but I'm just struggling to focus. And I want to enjoy this ribbon embroidery. So I might do another little spray out of here. So I'm a, that sort of feels like a good little spot for a flower. No, I'm going to leave that. End this off. Don't have much of the blue left. Have another look at the piece. So I've got a little tuft here, tuft there. I feel like I need something in there. So 
So let's So we're patiently waiting for our first prompt, aren't we? For our treasure hunt, volume four of the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. So part three will be tomorrow. You've already watched number one. Part three, and then that'll give me a day or so to digest the first prompt and get ready for the videos on the weekend of the adventure. I'm going to go up there and throw a couple more up into here. I might even need to find another ribbon just to keep building on my embroidery because there's, there's potential here of doing quite a lot. So I'm going into the paper now. It's getting a bit tricky. I'll leave it at that. Got a little bit of ribbon left. Where can we go? We get two petals or just maybe it's a tiniest little bit I think I'll build this up a lot more here maybe I'll just uh, this this stitch out here I'm gonna put probably some more French knots on maybe I'll just come down here with a couple little blue buds or maybe onto the picture a couple little buds might put another stitch into there so we're really creeping onto the picture now yep okay that's it for the blue Oops, just want to do one more knot there. There are all sorts of different techniques to do with ribbon embroidery that I'm really being naughty and not doing. So if you want to really study the art of ribbon embroidery, heaps of YouTube videos. And of course, Susanna's got her project as well. Go and jump down that rabbit hole for a a few videos and just see what you pick up and add it to your repertoire and if you've never done it before don't be afraid of ribbon embroidery it's a lot of fun so I've got little touches of blue around I'll put all the stems in later I think once I start putting in some little little daisy things or I don't know what type of flower I'm going to use there's such wide ribbon too so it might be as simple as just little daisies, just to get a little extra leafy bulk looking. I don't know, but they'll be pretty just in amongst it. And I'll just follow that line, just building it up. I'll um, definitely do some more embroidery in amongst it, but that's a good start. I can hear fudge coming again. Um, what was I going to do then? I had an idea. Oh, yeah, I've got these little sequins and beads, which are also little flowers. So I thought I could use some of those just to add a little texture to. But we'll have a play with all that in the next video. And I've got some of these. These are pre-made ribbon roses. They could go into it as well. Might be a bit big, a bit overpowering. Yeah, don't like that. <laughs> These colours sort of match with some beads. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play 
a little bit more. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. And in the next video, we'll do a little bit more work on it. But I'm happy with this little element that I did not think I'd be doing that at the beginning of this. I thought I'd be right into the embroidery, but I feel like that just finished that top corner. Got a bit of a thing happening here. Not doing anything else to Bunny. I've just invisible stitched him down. I love how I can see his little layers that he's been cut out of a, an old vintage quilt. And I love how he's a bit three-dimensional. Mm, really good. All right, guys. I'll leave it at that. And uh, enjoy your day. I hope you have a lovely day. I'm sure my day will settle down and everything will be back in order. But till then... Yeah, going to be a few challenges. I'm just grabbing my little book to make sure it's still all blending. Yeah, it is. Let me bring the camera up a little bit again. There we go. Yeah, it's different, but it's it's like that little piece of fabric there is here. And that's the start of it coming together. I like, it's amazing. Look, see this tag out here? Look at that. That fabric's up there. Yeah, I do feel like it's blending together. And I think once we start really embellishing this with some of these ribbons, it's beautiful. Love it. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. And hopefully I'll have some good news to tell you about the adventures that I'm going through at the moment. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Bye.